Aaron Burnett out front. Weeknights at 7, only on CNN. Away from the physical battlefield, terrorists are creating a virtual one on Twitter to spread their ideology. Abu Barra follows dozens of extremists on Twitter, reinforcing his own hardline politics, which have already seen him jailed for urging the murder of US troops in Iraq. The reason why people are drawn to these new Twitter channels is because there is an opportunity to hear the other side of the argument. There's no doubt the ideas of you know, the Al-Qaeda or um, you know, other organizations along the same thinking are spreading very quickly and very rapidly. Based around Mali, Al-Qaeda in the Islamic Maghreb has gained 5,500 Twitter followers in less than a month. And up here in Syria, the Al-Nusra Front has a massive Twitter presence of more than 50,000 followers. And down here in Somalia, Al-Shabaab, which the U.S. describes as a terrorist organization, was quick to react to the Boston bombings on Twitter. The day after the attack, it tweeted, don't you just hate it when you can't make it to the finish line, adding the casualties are just a tiny fraction of what U.S. soldiers inflict upon millions of innocent Muslims across the globe on a daily basis. The degree of terrorist training received by the Sanayev brothers is still being investigated. But experts say if they self-radicalized online at home, they wouldn't be the first. It's kind of a misnomer to call them lone wolves because even though they are physically alone, of course they're interacting with other people online. Oh, Abu Barah says that uh, online uh, army uh, of extremists uh, is growing. People are being radicalized through their own research and really seeing the oppression as something that needs to be fought and to be opposed and even uh, to seek retaliation. Meaning they don't have to travel to camps like these and risk meeting the extremists face to face. Dam Rivers, CNN, London.